Hello beautiful people. I've been skating my Lurp Piv trucks for about two and a half months. So I figured I'd do a little bit of a review, talk about the pros and cons of these trucks. There are some good things, there's some bad things about the Lurp Pivs, but I've been really abusing them, trying to skate them in all sorts of different environments and circumstances curves, pull coping, rails, uh, trying to test the churns, popping with them, sliding with them. Basically, I've just really been trying to utilize these trucks as much as possible so that I can give you a fair review and a fair sort of judgment of these trucks. But before we go into the details of how these trucks are good or they're bad or who they're for and who they're not for, I'm actually in Oceanside. Just got done looking at some places with my wife. We're planning on moving soon. Looking forward to that. But nor here nor there. We're here to skate, get a little session in, get one more session on these trucks before I kind of give you a final review, a final remarks on whether or not these are trucks that maybe you should be buying. <laughs> got back from Prince Park. Super fun session. I didn't skate for a super long time because I actually wanted to skate the Mickey Mouse shaped bowl, but they had just repaired the pole coping. So basically had wood in there, it was under construction. We're not under construction, it was basically under maintenance to where they're trying to let it cure and dry and you can't skate it for two more days. I really wanted to skate that so I can show you guys how good these trucks really do turn, but uh, we'll have to do that another time. We're gonna run through some different things real quick. I'll leave chapters down below if there's any specific topic that you're interested in. You can go ahead and skip around. But yeah, let's talk about these Lurt Piv trucks. I did get the first batch. So like, this is the first Lurt Piv trucks that were in the US. I can confirm that, I did confirm that. So I've been writing them for uh, as long as I possibly can before I can give you an actual review. I did make another video, but that was just my initial thoughts and unboxing. Now, I definitely have some more experience with these trucks. I'm sort of getting a groove. We'll talk about the durability of them. The groove is, it's taken a lot of time and I've been skating these trucks in a lot of different environment, a lot of different situations, big transition, small transition, manual pads. I mean, pretty much everything. And I feel like I can definitely make a fair judgment whether or not I like them, if I would get them again, and if they are for you, depending on what you skate. The first thing that I feel like we should talk about and address is probably the elephant in the room or in the video. A lot of people have had issues with the kingpin coming loose and it did happen to me. I was trying something over this little channel and doing a lip side. So it was really like, you know, cranking my board, if you will. And I did notice they got loose. It was super weird. I wasn't sure if it was like a bushing thing or what right away. This is before, you know, I really heard anything about it. And I just tightened them down and I didn't have any more problems on that session. I did ask Oski about the kingpin issue, if he had experienced it like I had experienced and like many others have experienced it. And he said he didn't have any problems with his trucks for 10 months. I've been riding mine for, like I said, almost three months and it has happened about three different times. It's come loose. So I think with that said, it's pretty fair to say that the first mass big production of Lurt Piv trucks maybe didn't have the QC process that the batch that he was writing or that it really should have. Should have a good QP process. Oh, look at it. We got Delgado on the sesh. Look at that fit. 
So yeah, I think a kingpin getting loose on a brand new truck, it sucks. It's, it's not ideal. You don't want to be having to fix things, and especially when they're new products. But like I said, it's only happened a few times I've been abusing these trucks. However, I'm sure in their future, uh, there will be more solutions. I know there's the grub lock, it's a band-aid, but I'm sure, you know, Oski, JMag, everyone at Lurpiv is gonna do their best in just solving these issues as time goes on. And the thing that I tried to do actually just yesterday is use Loctite. And the reason I wanted to try this is to see if I can solve this issue with my current trucks, even though they, Lurpiv as a company, already solved this issue. We'll get into that first, but I wanted to propose something and kind of I guess provide some value in this video if you're having this issue where the kingpin is getting loose. A, Lurpiv just added the new grub lock base plate. So I'll talk about them in a second. And these trucks, you can buy them online. They're like $9.60 a set. So that's one way to fix it. But if you're at home and you have these trucks and you're just thinking, I wanna fix it right now, what I did is basically picked up some Loctite from the local hardware store. And I got the red, which was the only one they had available. I actually wanted to get the blue because it's not as permanent. This one's more of a high strength. And basically what I did is I took the hanger off my truck, took the bushings off, and I just got the kingpin loose. And then once I got the kingpin loose, I added all the Loctite on the threads on both sides of the trucks. And then I screwed it back in. And obviously the scary part here is I don't want to lock my trucks to the point where I can't loosen them or tighten them or you know adjust the bolt at all, the inverted kingpin. I don't want to do that. However, this is an experiment because I do have other trucks. So I figured if it does lock and it doesn't work, at least I can find out and you don't have to do this experiment. You can, you can live it through me, but they did work. So I left them last night. Today, all that skin you just saw was after the Loctite. So I was able to adjust it too. I did notice that I was able to adjust the trucks. And since I've added Loctite, I haven't had any issues. The kingpin isn't getting loose. Everything's fine. However, it does come with the caveat, I did notice they weren't churning as good today. And I think that was probably just because I got a little bit of the Loctite potentially in the bushings or a little bit in this whole you know area where the kingpin is holding sort of everything together. So that might've been part of it. And I think as I skate, I'll sort of kind of work that stuff out. And I was able to loosen the truck. So even 24 hours later after I had did that, I was able to still churn the kingpin a little bit here and there. So. I think the idea is here is just gonna hopefully grab to the bottom a little bit better, but you can still adjust it. So Loctite worked for me. I'll report more like on Instagram at Dowdy is my handle. If you're curious of how that turns out, because I'm gonna still run these. I'm running my original trucks. However, like I said, Lurpiv did already solve this issue. So if you're having kingpin issue or if you're hesitant to buy these trucks because you heard about the kingpin issue, it's all good because we got this grub lock and basically they have this little area in the back. And what that does is gives you direct access to the kingpin. Now the trucks come with a little Allen key and you basically can just tighten it down. So if you have that issue, you tighten it down. I'm not sure there's any other skateboard truck company that is solving the skaters needs within like a month. Like every single truck on their website now comes with it. Last thing regarding the kingpin is that normally you will feel it getting loose. In my experience, I felt the kingpin getting loose and I just went and tightened it. Luckily I had a tool on me. So it's not like the trucks are just gonna fall off mid trick. I mean, you're gonna know that they're getting loose. Shout out to Lurt Pit for actually sending me these trucks. Super nice of them. I did buy these original ones, I will say. Um, I would buy another pair for the record too. I definitely would buy another pair. I definitely think they're worth their money. So kind of just wanted to address that first was the kingpin issue. And a lot of people, you know, they don't really care for the inverted kingpin. So they do have that option too. Like you can definitely get the truck with just a regular kingpin if you don't want to, or you can even switch out your existing truck if you have Lurpiv with a regular kingpin. When I say regular, I just mean the nut where it screws in at the top versus the regular inverted. So the problem with something like this and the reason a lot of the times companies or even the rider or someone like me doesn't want a nut like this is because you actually get more clearance with the inverted kingpin. Like there's more room to grind down versus something like that. You're gonna get down to that nut sooner. You can mess the nut up. I've had issues with indies where once you grind down that nut or you hit it too much, then you can't loosen or tighten your check at all. It kind of gets screwed. So yeah, having the inverted kingpin, I think it's super cool. 
it's not a deal breaker for me. Um, however, just something to mention that, you know, you can't adjust these trucks just because, you know, these things come this way or there has been issues doesn't mean that you can't solve them or find your own way to fix it. And I understand if you're paying for a product, you want to get it in a way you can just write it out of the box. And I think I am proof that that is totally possible. Like I said, this is the first time I really started messing with the Kingpin and I've had these trucks for nearly three months and I've been skating them and abusing the shit out of them. So the next thing we talk about is the durability. But first, slow roast Chemex, baby. I can definitely say with confidence, these definitely are the most durable trucks I've ever skated as far as like the metal on metal and just the abuse that they can take. Like besides the kingpin issue that I did experience, totally a normal thing to happen with the brand new product as far as like the grinding on them. It's been crazy. Like I'm barely starting to kind of get a groove and I've been skating these really hard, especially on pull coping and on curves. I've been like almost just seeing how far I can really push them. And just, as you can see, truck bashing things to where I hit this back area over here just to see if I could ding any of this. So I, I was kind of intentionally seeing if I can mess up the nuts and the bushings and really just trying to abuse these trucks as much as possible. And they took everything super good. The first initial grinding sound and noise was kind of weird, I will say at first. Like, it felt like there was more tension. Like, it didn't slide across things as buttery maybe or as nice as a brand new pair of aces or a brand new pair of indies did but then once i got some of that surface level stuff off it started grinding really good so now i'm at a place where they're grinding probably better than ever probably grinding the best now that i have enough little coverage and dings in there sort of getting that groove that's a very similar experience that i had with aces that they grind well a little bit different they grind really good at first and then they started having this like really like almost hard to grind through them. Like once I found like a nice, started getting a nice groove, they got really bad. And then eventually they started working again. It almost like has different stages of life. I think once you get down to that, like, you know, two millimeters into the hanger, that's when it started just grinding a lot different. And it might be simply because of how flat it gets. You know, once it gets flat, it starts to lose it where these, they almost are staying so round. And I think that has to do with the durability of them. They're not getting too flattened out right away. Even though there is a groove, it's kind of happening on both sides. So the shape of the truck is sort of staying in the position or in the framework and in the original shape that it still stayed in while it's kind of shaving off the back and the front versus just getting flat. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with the durability. Maybe at one point I could break the actual hanger. I mean, I've done that with Indies and I will say, actually going back to the hanger thing really quick, when I was young, I broke so many different kingpins, sorry, the kingpin issue, not the hanger issue. I broke so many different kingpins on my Indies. Uh, I don't remember what stages were, I was really young, like in between like 16 to 17, there was something wrong with independent trucks. I swear, like every shop knew to have like extra kingpins on deck because all their kingpins were getting messed up and that was at a time where the company had already been around for probably like six or seven years. So I guess what I'm trying to identify is that like there's flaws within product design sometimes. Uh, I don't think the lure piv uh, situation is definitely an isolated situation. I think it just happens to be honest. And yeah, just something I wanted to mention I did think about recently is that I had a very similar issue actually with Indies back in the day when I was younger. Although now I do think independent trucks is like one of those trucks where it's gonna be stable. You know exactly what you're buying. It's gonna be really good. It's a very standardized product in a way. Where something like this, you might have to tinker around with it a little bit more. Not now that you have the grub lock, but you know, those little things are something to think about if you're the type of person that doesn't know how to get a nut loose and that's something hard for you, then yeah, maybe a truck like this just isn't good. As much as you may enjoy the aesthetic, it just might not work for your type of uh, abilities, if you will. So when it comes to Ace versus Lurpiv and churning, which one's better? I think it's totally subjected to your type of skating. Your skating backyard poles are really tight transition. Ace trucks actually might be better. I do think Ace trucks churn sharper, but that comes with the caveat of there's less control. So your sharpness of your turn is great. You can really 
swerve in and out of things. However, with the Lurpids, I have noticed I have more control. So I'm not as quickly going to the wheel bite. I do feel like it churns almost as good. Again, it really depends on what you're saying a good churn is, but I do feel like I have more control in it and I could churn pretty sharp. I like skating transition, tight, big skate parks, everything like that. So I think in my experience, the churning on the Lurpids is better uh, overall because I can skate in a lot of different environments without having to loosen or tighten my trucks I feel like they're just really consistent where with aces I think it's a really really good truck and to be honest I might skate aces on my pool board or something like that so I think it really is depending on what you like to skate at this point when you're comparing you know apples and oranges with trucks like this so it's really about your type of skating if you're doing slalom and you're really wanting to weave in and out of things aces might be better but if you're looking to skate skate parks big transition small transition and street i think uh, the lurp piz might be better where aces are going to be better in really tight transition so I know that's not a super black and white uh, comparison, but I also think when we're talking about skate products and we're talking about trucks, you really have to question what it is that somebody says is good or bad because that might change depending on who you're asking. I do think they did a good job of sort of taking that ace turn with a really nice sharp turn, but being able to control it more. I'm not sure if that has to do with the geometry or the bushings. I think it has more so to do with the geometry of the trucks for some reason or another and the shape of them. I think that works really good to your advantage. I'm able to do everything that I possibly can as physics allow me to. So I, at this point, I don't think the churning is even something to be questioned. Like, yeah, they churn amazing, aces churn amazing. I think they churn equally as good but my experience personally with these lure pivs is that they turn even better because I don't get to the wheel bite as fast. So with that said, I think, you know, getting to the wheel bite does mean it churns, but it also means that almost like doesn't have that resistment. And I think that resistment, in my opinion, means that it's turning even better because um, it's allowing me to still ride my board. So uh, someone did ask, you know, what would you ride, lurt pivs or aces, as far as transition goes? And I think that's a really hard question. Um, it really comes down to a few things. Do you like how they look? Do you like the aesthetic of them? Do you want to try them? And as far as the wheelbase goes, it's a pretty similar wheelbase as an ace. I do like the lurt pivs more, in my experience. It, it might not be that way for everyone, but I do think they also grind so cool and they are more durable. I think they're definitely more durable than an A. So with all that said, yeah, I think at the end of the day, I would pick Lure Piv trucks over Ace if I was going to buy a pair of trucks at the skate shop or online. So yeah, hopefully that answers some of your questions. Definitely leave your comments regarding, you know, the different trucks and comparisons and I'll try to get back to you. Maybe again, I'll do another recap in like three months of how they're actually holding up. Now, when it comes to the height on these trucks, I know that's a like big concern. I think a lot of it, and I've mentioned this, I think in my last video and been talking with a lot of people on the session, it's a lot about the geometry and how they look. They look like they're super high and you know, there's an ace right behind it. It's kind of hard to see because obviously it's not like you know, right next to it, but as you can see, putting it as flat as possible. So lure pivs do come in at 55 millimeter tall. Just for some quick comparison, it's basically the same as a standard indie. I think a lot has to do with just the geometry and how they're shaped. Again, like even Aces, I think Aces were the only truck sort of on the market that had this very like geometry and very thin looking top hanger where it's just round, it doesn't really taper down um, on a lot of trucks that do. A lot of times the trucks will taper down to this and it creates this illusion of the truck almost being lower than it is. So. I do think a lot of it just has to do with just the shape of the truck and how it looks. It looks like it's a really high truck, but honestly, it's not very high. It's a pretty standard as far as the height goes compared to an Indy, a regular Indy, like I was saying. So it's not a concern for me, again, also because I'm skating transition. It's kind of nice to have that medium area. I have been getting some wheel bite, as you can see, but I ride my trucks on the looser side, not super loose, but on the looser side. and. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of clearance without being super high off the ground for pop. So as far as the height goes, I don't think it's been bothersome to me at all. I feel like I have just as much pop and I don't feel like I'm too far from the ground or anything weird like that. I think a lot of the scare, the height on these trucks has to just do with how they look and the geometry of them 
and they're all shaped because this hanger, like I said, is just straight all the way across where other trucks kind of taper down and you give you this illusion that they're actually closer to the board. Last thing I'm gonna say for this review is that we're talking about skate products and these type of things. It is so subjective. What works for me might not work for you. What works for the next guy might work for you. You never know. So I think like when you're talking about reviewing skate products, there's no like right or wrong way. It's not always black and white. It's just about what works for you. And this has been my experience. I'm never gonna tell you like what you should buy, what you shouldn't buy or anything like that because I just don't feel comfortable telling you those type of things. I don't think I should be telling you what you should and shouldn't buy with your hard earned money. However, I can just explain how I experienced a product and that's what this has been. So smash that like button if you enjoy this video, subscribe if you haven't, or if you're not already, what just happened, all right, all right. See you next one, mash. Turn the camera real quick so you can just see how cute she is. Look at that. Majestic face.